Hi, Craig here, Nicole's on the camera. We're in Desert today. The village of Desert was once a royal borough held by land barons, the Sinclair family, and this independent status only ended in 1930 when Desert became a suburb of Kirkcaldy. So if there's anything at all about this scene that looks familiar to you, it's probably because you recognise it as one of the locations for the TV series Outlander. In 2016, this 15th century harbour gained some fame when it was dressed to become the location for Le Havre, a French harbour setting in the second episode of season 2 of the popular TV show Outlander. This harbour has been active since the 1400s and once thrived with activity as a significant port of export for locally produced salt and coal. Salt exports and the village's trade links with the Low Countries earned Dissert two nicknames. Salt production and export gained the village the title the Salt Borough, while the village's architectural style, which was influenced by the Low Countries, meant that Dissert was known as Little Holland. The Sinclair family moved the short distance from Ravenscraig to occupy more modern and comfortable accommodation on their land in Dissert in 1756. Dissert then became the seat of the Earl of Roslyn for the next 200 years. The Earl of Roslyn had the harbour extended in around 1835 to accommodate bigger ships and greater export profits, made possible by the level of coal production as nearby collieries. Nowadays, some fishing is still carried out from this harbour and it's also the home to Dissert Sailing Club. We've come along at low tide so we can have a look around on the floor of this 15th century harbour. Let's see what we can find. Have you found anything? A couple of pieces of pottery and uh, kind of glass, decorative glass. There's not much here. No, I don't I imagine. Know. Okay, well, I'll pop down and have a wee look with you. So, I've only found a couple of pieces so far. I've not been looking long. And um, we're just in the harbour as well. We haven't even got to the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I found a couple of pieces of pottery and I'll show you what they look like. And a bit of beach metal. Okay. Let's pop round for a peek at this. So. Still relatively shiny, but I do think they're old. And that one is really cute with a kind of wave pattern. And that's that. Nice bit piece of a glass, glass ball there. Yeah. And a bit of rigging, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. A bit of clay and a tile. So I think we'll take that for our collection. of uh, best finds of the day so we're collecting plastic colorful plastic so that's the plastic we found in this harbour area always lots of fishing line and bits and well let's see what I've got in the bag I've got a couple of bits of pottery that I think are really cute and uh, don't know how old they are one looks like it's got a partial wheel on it Oh right, yeah, that's really cool. The one that follows the towards yeah. the tips of your fingers. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it's got a tail. <laughs> that does look like a whale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably not, but I, I don't know. It's really cool. Yeah. Let's say it's a whale. Very fitting. Clues to Dissert's commercial past can be seen on some of the street names that are still around today. Hop Hot Wind is a good example of this. The road leads downwards towards the harbour and it continues around to an area called Pan Hall, where the Dutch influenced architecture still exists. The name Pan Hall is descriptive. Ho means low level ground in Scots language, and here it refers to the area where Dissert's salt pans once existed. Like St Monans and many other coastal villages with access to coal, Dissert was once one of Scotland's salt producers. Together, Hot Pot Wind and Pan Hall point to the commercial salt making that took place here in Dissert. The houses here at Pan Hall date back to the 1400s, though there were more rough and ready settlements on this site before that. These stone buildings were renovated in the 1960s as part of a programme to protect the area's historical interest. Nowadays, the desert area is entirely within a conservation zone. 
The tower you can see behind Pan Hall is called St Serf's. It was once part of a church building, named because St Serf is said to have used nearby caves as a retreat in the 8th century. In fact, the entire village takes its name from St Serf's retreat. The Scots word, Dizer, refers to a hermit's retreat or a church. In addition to coal, salt and fish, Desert also produced whale oil for a short period of time. A building was especially constructed on the western side of the harbour in 1835 for this purpose. Production was short-lived. Living only a short distance uphill from the harbour area and having pleasure gardens nearby, the Earl of Roslyn was offended by the smell created when whale oil production was underway, and he successfully petitioned the House of Lords to have the activity stopped at Desert. The old oil house, where whale oil was produced, later became the home of Dissert Sailing Club, though it was irrecoverably damaged by fire in 2012, and although it still stands roofless today, it has remained empty since the fire. If the name Roslyn sounds familiar, it may be because of Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code, which made Roslyn Chapel internationally famous. Although, as we heard last time, the 5th Earl of Roslyn lost his land here in Dissert and in Ravenscraig, they continued to own Roslyn Chapel, Roslyn Castle and estate grounds in Roslyn, which is nearby the city of Edinburgh, on the other side of the River Forth. Dissert House, once the seat of the Earl of Roslyn, is now a convent and a home to the Carmelite nuns. Low, curious wee tongue. Yeah, I'm 6 feet 3, so I don't, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm tiny. I'm actually, I'll have to die as well. And there's a little beach just over there. And we're going to have a look there. You can see the amount of coal, there's a huge seam of it. It's not surprising that we'd find a lot of it still lying down at the beach here. So what have you found? Well, I found a couple of pieces of really nice uh, sea glass so far. It's a uh, sea foam. One bit stands out as being the perfect drop shape for the tree. Oh, they're really nicely frosted. Mm-hmm. And that one is really nice. Mm -hmm. Ooh, some colourful plastic for our collection. <laughs> a piece of clay pipe and it's a bit of beach metal. Now beach metal is a molten metal and you can find it at the beach and it usually has really quirky shapes. Now this is the piece of uh, clay pipe. You can just see it's got a hole on either side. There's a bit of sand in it. You never find these up here. No, no. If you're in London and you're mudlacking there, you probably find thousands, but here they really rare. Yeah, you just need to get into a harbour there where sort of people have been smoking pipes all their lives. Yeah. Oh, a couple of hundred years ago. <laughs> so, that's a really cool find. That's really excellent. Mm hmm Cool.
I just wanted to show you a couple of really special finds that we found in desert. Now this is a fragment of clay pipe and it's only the second one I've found in seven years of mudlarken. The other one I found in St Andrews a few years ago, so it's really special. I also wanted to show you this and it's a little piece of pottery that I've made into a necklace and I found it in Desert Harbour and it's just a really cute piece and when I found it my first thought was hey it looks like a whale so here yeah, it is, it's really cute. I've never actually seen a piece of pottery with a wheel pattern on it. Now if you have, please do let me know. Uh, when I found it, it did very much remind me of a wheel, so I have decided to make it into a necklace because it is such a gorgeous piece of pottery. As always, a massive thank you to all of our subscribers and to everybody who supported us. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. And if you're interested in supporting us in any other way, please see the links that we have in the description. We'll see you next time.